Hey, 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 everybody. Today, I want to talk about something that's really important in your success of running an online business, and that is overcoming objections. Objections are something that's going to come up in every single sales conversation that you have. It's a natural part of the process, and if you don't master it, you're not going to be signing on new clients and making new sales. So let's get into it. You're listening to Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast. Welcome to Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast. And now your host, Melissa Jakubovic. All right, so let's start off by explaining what is a sales objection. Basically, this is when someone says, I am not ready to buy for whatever reason. And there are many different reasons why someone might not be ready to buy. This is a barrier that exists between where people are now and where they need to be Mm -hmm. in order for them to say yes to working with you. So that gap from where they are now and where they need to be is what you need to fill by overcoming their objection. There is a specific formula that you can use to create a comfortable environment that makes people feel like there's a reason to trust you, you understand what they're going through, and can move them closer towards the sale. So that's what I want to talk about with you today. It's overcoming objections. The first thing to note is that a lot of times we come up with these objections when we're in the buyer position because we have some fear. This fear is there to protect us, to protect us from making quick decisions or the wrong decisions or just not being in alignment. But sometimes that fear, what it does is it stunts our growth. And so we need to tap into the buyer's perspective and understand their psychology around this fear because sometimes it's a limiting belief, other times it's a boundary, and we need to decipher which one it is and how to coach them through to the sale. So what I call the comfortable close is where you can bring up these sales objections earlier on in the call before we get to the end of the call, where then it becomes a hurdle that we have to overcome. So you want to be able to make them feel very comfortable and Mm -hmm. understand that you understand where they're coming from. And that really puts you in the driver's seat. It puts you in that alpha position, but more importantly, it puts you in that position of coach or healer even before they purchase and begin to work with you. So there are three parts to overcoming every objection, regardless of which objection you get. The first is to face the objection. The second is to explore the objection. And the third is to provide reassurance. Now, there are five very common objections that you will hear during your discovery sessions. The first one is, I need to talk to my, this can be my partner, my spouse, my mom. I need to talk to somebody else. Sometimes this deflects the outcome onto someone else because they're too scared to say, you know what, this is not a good fit for me or I don't want this right now. Other times it's because they have a relationship of trust with their partner, their spouse, their mom, etc., and they want to include them into the conversation. So your job is going to be to figure out which one is it and how can you navigate that in a natural way that empowers the person on the other side of the call to make the decision on their own. Now, that isn't to say that you shouldn't let them speak to their other half. In fact, I encourage you to let them speak to whoever they need to speak to before they make that decision, but just make sure they're coming to that decision because They've already made their own decision and they want to bring someone else into the conversation, not because they're asking permission from someone else and deflecting that no onto someone that you don't even know instead of being able to just be bold enough and say, you know what, this isn't a good fit for me. The second objection that you're going to hear is I can't afford it. I hear that a lot. I can't afford it. But if you're able to negotiate, maybe you can make a different payment plan. Maybe you can help them tap into other assets that they have that they forgot about, you can actually overcome this one rather easily. Join my Get Clients Sales Sprint right now. When it comes to running a business that is actually profitable, many entrepreneurs find themselves making costly mistakes and leave thousands of dollars on the table each month. 
In this interactive sales sprint, I will challenge you daily for three weeks with actions that get you closer to your next paid client and guide you through all of the steps you need to follow in order to have a business that actually grows your bank account. If you aren't profitable, you have an expensive hobby, and it's time to change that right now. Time to pay yourself the big bucks, my dear. Go to AbundantStrategy.com slash get dash clients dash sales dash sprint. See you there. Number three, now's not a good time. Now, the thing with now's not a good time, sometimes, and I'm going to say maybe 15% of the time, it truly is not a good time. They've got way too much on their plate. They're not going to be able to devote the time and energy needed to go through your program. But the other 85% of the time, they're just overwhelmed. They're unorganized. They don't know how to structure their time very well. And that might be exactly what you teach and can help them with. So you want to be able to convey that. The fourth objection you'll hear is, I need to think about it. Now, when you hear this one, It's generally because they don't have enough information or they're too scared to tell you the truth, which is I'm not interested. So if they don't have enough information, it is your job to make sure that you provide them with that information. I need to think about it generally means "Uh, I'm not really sure. I haven't been sold yet on the value. And that's where you can go back and say, well, what else do you need to know? Or what questions have I not answered for you? So that you can continue the conversation and you can discuss until they are clear enough and then they don't really need to think about it. And number five, I'm not sure it will work for me. Now this comes from the fear of I don't want to invest and then not get the results. So your job would be to show people that have invested and gotten the results or talk about a situation or a story from a past client or from yourself where you have gone through this program, you have done the action steps needed and you did receive a transformation. So those are the five common objections that you'll hear. Now to apply these objections to our formula, face the objection, explore the objection and provide reassurance. I'm going to give you an example. So for the example, I need to talk to my, to face the objection, you would say something like, great. I talk to my partner when I buy things too, because we have a history of trust. So you're facing the objection. You're not closing down, running away and going, oh yeah, I need to talk to them. Okay, bye, click. Instead, you're encouraging them. I'm facing it. Great. I do that too. I talk to my partner because when I buy things, I want to include my partner in that decision. So step two, explore the objection. This is where you're going to ask some questions so we can start a conversation here about this. So you might say, does your partner support you? Or what questions might your partner have? Because a lot of times they want to talk to their partner to help make the decision. But if they already know what the partner is going to ask, then you can give them that information so that when they go speak to their partner, they have all the information they need. And step three, provide reassurance. This is where you're making them feel comfortable. You're allowing them to take the time that they need, but letting them know that you understand where they're coming from. So you would say something like, well, you've been trying this on your own for so long. It hasn't been working. One thing that I've actually learned while doing this for so long is that asking for help is the first way forward so that you can end this cycle and start achieving your goals. Now, another great way to overcome objections is to use empathy. And I know a lot of people listening to this podcast are empaths, so it's very natural to use your empathy. But there's a formula for that as well, and it's called feel felt found. Feel felt found is a great way to express your empathy because it allows the client or the potential client on the discovery call to understand that you really do relate to them. You understand how they feel. So for example, we would say something about how you feel, like I understand why you feel that way. Then we move to felt and we talk about somebody else who's already been through this. I had another client who was in a similar situation and felt the same way. So now they know they're not alone. And then found is the solution. So what we found is that this worked best when X, Y, Z. I want you to use feel felt found because it really does allow the person to put their guard down, understand that you know where they're coming from and shows them a path forward. It's kind of like past, present, future. So for example, if you have a coaching program that's 
six months long. And the objection that you're hearing is, I don't have enough time for this. To use the feel felt found method, you could say something like, I understand why you'd be concerned about the length of time required to implement this program. We've had other clients who have felt the same way and you can even name them. Stephanie, one of my other clients felt the same exact way because she was going through a lot of hard times with her family. Then you move into the found and you say, what they found was though, was once we implemented this system and we set it up and it was completely operational, it saved her so much time that she never felt like she was always in this hamster wheel. So it's the feel, the felt, and the found. Now, whichever way you use to overcome objections, find one that feels best for you. But just know that when you get faced with an objection, It is not a reflection of you or your service. It just is a natural part of this process. So you do need to understand how to overcome objections because you're going to hear them again and again. And the good news is the more you go through this, the more calls you get on, the more objections that you hear, the more practice you will get and the better you will become at them. Okay, I hope this helps and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast at www.marketingtipswithmeliss.com. Oh, wait, before you go, I've got a super special invitation for you, so listen up. Join thousands of spiritual women, entrepreneurs, coaches, healers, and business owners in a cozy community to learn effective and aligned strategies to grow and scale your business through organic marketing and so much more. And for a limited time, when you join my free community, you will also get a free copy of my book, Abundance of Aligned Clients and Consistent Income. Join the Spiritual Women Entrepreneurs community at spiritualwomenentrepreneurs.com to claim all your free gifts. See you on the inside.